you enter the highway system really to get here. That highway has served as a big divider for the city in so many ways. But then once I exit the highway, I'm completely immersed in a vibrant, thriving Latino community. It doesn't matter what time of day you come over here, there's people walking on the streets, talking, gathering. Being here, I can more authentically um, tap the experiences people have more in a normative day-to-day -day life experience type stuff. So I love, I love being here. Now the project really that we had with Dr. Shannon Chavez Correll was really exciting. It was an adaptation of a previous evidence-based depression clinic that had been proven successful, but only in a clinical setting. There was a concern among the elder and older adult day programs here that staff members thought they were seeing depression, but because they're not clinical psychologists or have any psychology training, they weren't sure that it was depression. So for me, they were saying, is there any way that you could do like a national depression day of screening here? That one-time standalone depression screening served as pilot data. We actually were shocked to find that the prevalence rates for depression were higher than, than the normative population for older adults. And, um, and in turn, we used that data as kind of foundational data to write a federal grant for $1.3 million over three years. Part of the treatment was that the participants had to do healthy activities for themselves. These activities were planned around the community and themselves as Latinos. We got funding to do it for the first time in a community setting. So participants would be coming to here, the community center, for their mental health appointments, not to a hospital or to a mental health clinic. And we were able to provide free depression treatment for 200 plus Latino elders and their treatment was like a six-month cycle, six-month follow-up. We're now in the process of publishing those results. It turned out that we had a 15% better, um, better outcomes than the original study had. Um, not only that, but our participants had lower rates of medication use, that's antidepressant use, than those in the original study. And our retention rate was incredible. I think we had only eight people drop out of the study. So that commitment to kind of community and partnership, the rewards were felt by at least 200 more people, plus the agency itself. And the grant was funneled through UCC. So all the overhead went to the organization for employees and so forth. So I think this one depression screening event, the rewards were rippled and multiplied. Together as a team, we're going to be able to advance this programming, we're going to be able to advance this science. You have to let the community lead sometimes. You're not always at the fore, and we're trained to be at the tip of the spear for a decade, 15 years um, in graduate school and beyond. And it's hard to sort of put that down and say, these community folks are really smart, they know what they're doing, and they may have expertise that I don't have. Engaging in those um, dialogues with the stakeholders from the beginning is important because ultimately it leads to a solid uh, design, solid modifications to your interventions because you're getting feedback from people who would likely you know, mirror your target audience. It pays off in the long run. If you got in the buy-in of the community, then definitely you'll have more credibility. So as soon as an idea occurs to a researcher, get the input from the community and say, what do you think? Does, is this a problem that the community needs solving? When the relationship is strong, the decisions come rather quickly. And we are focused on just getting the work done and having uh, the best outcomes we can achieve.